All medical interventions have an element of risk, and we need to be certain that the risks associated with induction are outweighed by the potential benefits. The main risk of hormonal methods is hyperstimulation, or making you contract too much. This can eventually affect baby's heart rate pattern, and in some cases cause babies to get tired or distressed. This is more likely in women who have had multiple vaginal deliveries in the past. If hyperstimulation occurs, then the hormone drip can be stopped or the hormone pessary removed. If needed, an injection to temporarily stop contractions can be given. Women who have had an induction of labour tend to find labour more painful than those who go into labour naturally. This is more common in women who need the hormone drip and is probably because the hormone drip makes your contractions as good as they possibly can be. As a result, more women being induced have an epidural in labour. This is an injection into the back which provides very effective pain relief in labour. Women who have epidurals are a bit more likely to need help to deliver baby when they start pushing. This may mean either a ventouse, which is a suction cup on baby's head, or forceps, which are like metal salad spoons that cut baby's head to speed up delivery. Induction of labour does not increase your chance of having a caesarean, and in fact there is growing evidence that it reduces your chance of having a caesarean. This is probably because when we induce before the natural onset of labour, the placenta is younger and therefore better able to cope with the stress of labour, and the baby is smaller and more likely to fit through the pelvis. There are lots of reasons for being induced. Most will mean you can no longer labour on a midwife-led unit. In certain circumstances, where there are no concerns about baby's well-being, the midwife-led unit may still be an option. This is only the case if you go into labour after the propest pessary or after your waters have been broken and you have not needed the hormone drip. If there are concerns about your baby's well-being or if you have required the hormone drip, you will need continuous monitoring of baby's heartbeat during labour on the delivery suite. This means having the CTG trace, which involves having the stretchy bands on your tummy. If you need the oxytocin or hormone drip, this means that your movements are a bit more restricted, as the drip is given through a pump that is plugged into the wall. You can stand or sit on the birthing ball, and you can use the bath or birthing pool as long as we can continually monitor your baby's heart rate and your hand with the cannula in remains outside the water. Induction of labour can be a long and unpredictable process. There can be a lot of waiting around and there are often delays. This reflects us having to balance women who walk in in labour with women who are booked to come in for inductions and elective caesareans. Priority will always go to women who need induction most. This may mean that they are unwell or we have concerns about their baby.